Hi again, teachers. I am here with a part two video. There will be three parts in this video series for how to record a video with Google Meet. Um, I am first going to go over what we went over in the last video, which was um, actually doing the recording and stopping the recording. When you stop a recording in Google Meet, it will automatically save a video file to your drive for you. Um, for me, when I did this yesterday with a few videos as a trial run, it took about 20 minutes um, to save to my drive and process the video. Um, so if you can go and do something else for a few minutes and then come back, um, that will probably finish by the time you're done with another task. So um, when you're in Google Drive, however, you need to know how to locate your video so you know how to download it and upload it to YouTube. I recommend uploading your videos to YouTube only because many of our kids already know how to use YouTube and you can embed YouTube links into your Google Classroom and not really have to worry about the advertisements that happen in YouTube that we can't control. So first I'm going to bring you to my Google Drive. I'm going to drag myself over here and I'm going to select my drive using my waffle here. Okay. When I have selected my drive and waited for it to load a little bit, I see my recent files up here, but now I'm going to look in my drive for the folder with my Google meetings. So I'm going to scroll down here. Um, the folder should be called Meet Recordings. Another alternative to scrolling through all your folders is to just type up here, Meet Recordings. And you should be able to find the file there as well. Um, but when you're in your drive, if you cannot locate a file folder called Meet Recordings, it's possible that your videos just haven't processed yet and you should check back in later. Okay, so I'm going to double click on this file here now, and I'm going to try to locate the video that I just made, and I believe it is this one. And I see that it doesn't have a play icon, it just has that um, director's red icon. And I see that it's not letting me play it and preview it. However, I can download the video even before it's ready to preview. So if I click download, I see my new download in the downloads bar in my Chrome, um, and I see that it's done downloading because the blue circle is no longer around it. Okay, and I'm going to go back to my YouTube channel. So I'm going to type YouTube here because now I've downloaded the file. Um, you can log into your YouTube channel using your Google account through school. That's what I made mine through, and it was very easy to do that. On the YouTube homepage, there is this icon here, create a video and more. I'm going to click that, move myself, um, and upload the video. And wait for it to load. I am now going to drag and drop the file. You can also select the file if you know where you have saved it or you know where to look in your downloads. So I'm going to click the file and hold, drag, and drop. And that is my video uploading to YouTube. Okay, here we see a few options we have. I can retitle it. I probably don't want to title it Novzimstin, which is what it's titled right now. Um, I would give it a different title, maybe a catchier title. I would add a description. Um, thumbnails will be a separate video for you. Um, they're not required to upload a video, but they sure help you organize your videos a little bit. I can create a playlist. Currently, I have two playlists on my YouTube channel, Remote Learning 2020 for my students and tutorials for teachers for you, um, a teacher. So in the audience section, <clears throat> I do believe it is, I do believe it is important to say yes, it's made for kids because that closes off the comment section below your video. I see that my video is still processing. I'm going to stop this recording right now so that I can show you what to do after your video processes when you upload to YouTube. Thank you for watching this video. I will be with you shortly in part three. Bye.